All right, guys, we've got another uh, 2024 mock battle. Now, this one, this is another one I think has a legitimate chance of actually happening. It's Gavin Newsom, the California governor versus Donald J. Trump, the former 45th president of the United States. So, guys, uh, you know, this matchup with Gavin Newsom, I talked about it yesterday when he was facing off against Ron DeSantis. You know, he is a favorite right now. For the Democrats, we know they're not running Biden. We know they're not running Harris. So Newsom and kind of his way he, he leads, the way he talks, he's got a swag to him that I'm sure Democrats do like. Now, his handling of the pandemic was a complete disaster and a total infringement on citizens' rights. Uh, but overall, the Democrats, you know, that is the way they seem to govern, at least when it comes to the pandemics and stuff. And we can discuss all of that. And I want to discuss the overall dynamic between what the gover what the Republicans want their relationship to be with the government compared to what the Democrats want, because I think that's our number one biggest rift right now between the two parties. You've got Democrat, we'll talk about it later. Let's go through this. I don't want to go off into something crazy, but obviously Donald Trump is the favorite for the Republicans. He was just campaigning maybe last night or a few nights ago in Wisconsin. So Trump is out doing rallies. He's waiting to make his big announcement. People were speculating it was going to come on July 4th, but many people are saying now it will come after the... Uh, midterms in November, Trump obviously announcing he will be running for the 2024 Republican, uh, you know, as a president for the Republicans, if he can win the primaries against DeSantis and everyone else. So uh, this is realistic, and I think it would be a very close race personally. So Nevada, I think Gavin Newsom probably would win. Well, it's just so tough with Newsom, but I, I will give it to Newsom. Arizona, I think, is a Republican state in 2024, pretty much no matter who they run. Same thing with Texas. Uh, you know, with Texas, it's just, it's too much to make up. We know, you know, the liberals are fleeing from California to Texas because they voted in all the lefty, the, the, the liberal politicians, and they've made the state worse. Now they move to Texas and they still vote for the liberal politicians. We're trying to help them on that, you know, which just doesn't make any sense. Some of the, sometimes I am an independent. I understand where some of these liberals are coming from, but we've seen a lot of them move from California because they are electing really far left leaders who are extremely soft on crime. It makes Los Angeles a complete hellhole, obviously. You want to send a social worker into a crime scene, not a police officer. That's the whole defund the police movement. Um, but um, it is what it is. I think Texas is going Republican. Minnesota, I think Newsom beats Trump in Minnesota. Personally, Minnesota is a more, like when you're look. obviously it's not part of the Rust Belt, but it, it with Minneapolis, it is more of a democratic state. It just has more Democrats, in my opinion, than the four Rust Belt states. Iowa's Republican. It would be shocking if Gavin Newsom running from, you know, obviously his, his home state in California carried the state of Iowa. That would honestly be a slap in the face to the people of Iowa. Like, there's no way you can. And then, of course, the people that do vote for him will say Trump's the devil and, you know, it's horrible. You can't. You know, it is what it is. Uh, Wisconsin, you know, how am I going to split up the Rust Belt? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to give Ohio to Trump because when you look at the Rust Belt, I really think it's a three-state thing. Technically, Ohio is also a part of it, but to me, Ohio is a pure Republican state when you look at what happened in 2016 and 2020 with the Republican carrying it easily. Could there be a scenario where a Democrat does win in 2024? Yes. Would it be a scenario with Gavin Newsom versus Trump? No. Uh, Trump wins this state by 8 to 10 points again against Newsom if this is the matchup, in my opinion. So let's go down. We will talk about these later because this is going to be a close race. We will go down to Florida and we will also give it to the Republicans. So it, this is a weird dynamic for Gavin Newsom. And this could be one of the reasons why the Democrats don't choose Newsom. For all of the things Gavin Newsom has going for him, when you compare him to Joe Biden, the charisma, the age, the way he moves around, he's a career politician, he knows how to talk a lot better than Biden, especially in his current state, the one major negative is the whole pandemic thing. And if he runs, I think he would basically, you know, you would kiss Florida goodbye. 
Florida is already trending away to the Republicans. We saw Trump carry it very slight margin in 2016. He's expanded it a little bit to three points in 2020, which by the way, if you were following the 2020 election and you told me, you know, you think three points is not that much, but for Florida, I would have guaranteed Florida would have been a state that was decided by one and a half points or less. Trump, I think, ended up winning it by 3.2. Don't quote me on that. But I think it was 3.2. Um, and it, again, this is a dynamic. If you're the Democrats, you will lose the state of Florida if Gavin Newsom is the nominee. The way he handled the pandemic, the way he criticized states and how they opened up everything. And again, guys, unfortunately, you've got a lot of... And it's not just Gavin Newsom. It really isn't. I, I'm using him kind of as a, a figurehead. But you have a lot of individuals who are very power hungry and they like telling people what to do and they are able to use the pandemic as an enabler and they say, that's the reason I want to control you. That's the reason we're going to close all the small businesses and shut them down. If you want to go out and you want to go to the store, you go to Walmart or you go to Target. No other small businesses. And the problem is a lot of these Democrats live in such bubbles to where if you polled every small business owner in the United States, the vast majority of them are Republicans. So all these liberal Democrats who don't even own cars in the state of California, in LA, they just have no thought process. When they hear Gavin Newsom say, everyone stay indoors, don't go out, don't go to any of the small businesses, they can't relate and realize, hey, if we actually don't do this, a lot of people, a lot of citizens they're going to be affected and they're going to unfortunately have very negative consequences to this. They can't think like that because they're in bubbles, unfortunately. Um, that is just the situation, right? That, that That is unfortunately what happens. So if Gavin Newsom does end up running for the Democrats, he will lose Florida just the way he handled the pandemic. Georgia, I've got Republican. We all know the story with Georgia. Democrats ran up huge numbers in the major population centers with all the, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, Fulton County, things like that. Um, so I think it goes back to Republican. Personally, it was a very... Guys, we know, like, the whole 2020 thing, I'm not going to get into it, but Trump, you know, it was a 10-point lead, and then, you know, Biden ends up winning it. I... I I don't know the final numbers, but it was a, a delayed longer vote due to the mail and stuff. And of course, we know many countries actually ban mail-in voting from their federal elections because mail-in voting, unfortunately, has rampant voter fraud. Now, I'm not saying there was any sort of voter fraud in 2020. I Personally, I really, I just don't want to argue that. There's no point because Republicans are going to say there was fraud. Democrats are going to say, oh, you're attacking our democracy, when, of course, they did the same exact thing in 2016 when they said Russia basically brainwashed us into voting for Trump and then spent two years investigating it with the Mueller report, uh, wasting millions of dollars only to find nothing. Uh, but either way, guys, it is what it is. A lot of these countries across the world actually ban mail-in ballots because there is just rampant voter fraud with them. Not saying that's what happened in this election, but they are banned in many other countries. So I do think Georgia goes to Republican. North Carolina, it's a talk. We'll go back to North Carolina. I, Virginia, I think Newsom wins Virginia. Just the way the state, the way the state operates, it seems like a Newsom type state he would carry. Uh, we've got Maine and New Hampshire, so I think Newsom wins Maine. I what I, what I think with New, it's tough with these two states. I think I actually had Vermont as a as a swing state by accident in one of my last videos, but no, it's New Hampshire and Maine. Those are the two swing states. So I am like I normally I'll split these up. Like I'll give one Democrat, one Republican. They're both four electoral votes. They're both smaller states. They're both swing states. Although I do think Maine is more dem Democrat than conservative. New Hampshire is sw strictly a swing state. So now we've got a pretty close battle, and when it comes to the Rust Belt, again, I'm doing the same thing I did last time. I'm giving Minnesota to Newsom, and I'm giving Wisconsin and Pennsylvania to Donald Trump, and then I will give Newsom North Carolina because I think Ron DeSantis would win by a bigger margin against Gavin Newsom than Donald Trump. And guys, if you look through these videos, I am generally going to be having the Republican win and unfortunately, that's not me being this crazy Republican. If you plunge our economy into a recession, if we have a disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal where we are embarrassed on a national stage, 
it's going to be very tough for the Democrats to win an election with that going on. They know it. That's why they tried to change the definition of the word recession. So these predictions, it's just what's probably going to happen when you have Joe Biden who has, now this isn't Joe Biden, but it's overall the Democratic Party, when you have historically awful approval rating, even worse than Trump with 90% of the media spewing crap and propaganda for you, that's generally not a good situation. So Democrats can be angry at these maps all they want. You, you're you literally more disliked than Donald Trump and you had CNN every day when Trump was president broadcasting that he was Hitler every single day and somehow Biden is even more disliked than Trump. So it's like, how can I, like right now, give, there are certain situations where I do think Gavin Newsom can beat Republican candidates this would be a close election, but it's like Newsom has no chance in Florida. Newsom has no chance in Ohio. Um, Texas is not a swing state. Georgia, you can say maybe, like if you want to argue it, maybe he wins Georgia. That gets him really close. He takes a smaller state like New Hampshire. Now you're talking he wins by, you know, a few points like that. So um, there are definitely scenarios for him. I think he's one of the better candidates for the Democrats. But it's like I go through these graphs and it, it generally will be there. This is what happens when you plunge the economy into a recession. You know, we tried the whole progressive crap, the whole Green New Deal and all that. And what did we get for it? We got a recession. So I don't think really many independent people want to go down that road again. And it looks like the Democrats are running on that same narrative. And it's just not very smart. It's all, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's, we got to do stuff about the environment. Let's not pump our own oil. And, and, and what does that result in? $7 at the gas tank. That's beautiful. But then of course you have people and Democrats like Stephen Colbert saying that, oh, just get a Tesla. You should, if you're paying too much for gas, go get a $60,000 Tesla. Uh, absolute tone deaf buffoon, Stephen Colbert. I saw him say that. That was a while ago, but it's just one of the most ridiculous statements from an absolute elite snob who probably, you know, when you talk about the, the plane trips and everything like that, the the, the uh, private flights, he probably uh, admits more CO2 admissions than every single person watching this video combined. But no, we're the ones that have to sacrifice. We're the ones that have to uh, get a $60,000 Tesla because gas is $7 because Democrats enact horrible policies because it's good for the environment. Oh, you think China's doing that? You think Russia's doing it? No, they're not doing it. So it's going to plunge our economy into a recession. Doesn't do anything to anyone else. It's, it, guys, we go through this thing and it's like, it's just not practical to do some of the stuff they're doing, but it is what it is. This is the overall graph for a, I do have Trump winning. I don't know. This was just showing, you know, maybe I do have Trump winning slightly. This is the overall prediction. A lot of speculation, a lot of stuff can change. I think the Democrats' best candidate is Michelle Obama. Uh, but I don't know if she wants to run. Maybe in 2028, if Trump wins in 2024, she might want to. But I don't even know if she wants to, honestly. I think right now, you know, for the Democrats, I, it's probably going to be somebody we're not even talking about. Because you hear Biden get thrown around. You hear Kamala get thrown around. You hear Newsom. You hear another guy you hear a lot is Buttigieg. Budicic is another guy you hear a lot, but there's not a lot of candidates here. Any of these other people, I would be shocked. The problem with Budicic, I mean, I think he'd struggle with the African-American vote. It's just like, what is the relationship there? He's this scrawny white dude who probably, you know, it's just, but again, you know, they, they'll vote for probably a Democrat no matter what. And then the Republican side, there's a lot of candidates here. Um, you know, it's probably going to be Trump or DeSantis. That's the general consensus. We'll see what Ted, Ted Cruz is a great talker. He really is great in front of the microphone, uh, a thousand times better than Trump in front of the microphone, but that doesn't matter. Charisma matters. Uh, you know, saying F you to the media matters. Trump's better at that. So, you know, that's the day and age we're in. I'm not saying Cruz would be a better candidate, but he's certainly a better politician than Trump. I don't think you can argue that. Um, Nikki Haley, how about a woman? It's so funny, you know, when, the first woman president is a Republican. Uh, you want to talk about a ro role reversal. And then we've got the big fella, Chris Christie. I can't wait to see Chris Christie on the national debate stage again. That's going to be amazing when they do that. You get Trump, Christie, DeSantis. Oh yeah. Throw Joe Rogan in the chicha. <laughs> Joe Rogan runs for presidency as a Republican and debates Donald Trump. 
Oh my God. Now, Joe Rogan says he's a Democrat, so I don't know. Maybe he'll run for the Democrats. But um, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.